Okay. <clears throat> this is kind of a cool problem, actually. I liked this. So for the A part, we're supposed to find the tension of the cord um, when it's at uh, the outermost position. So basically, we realize that tension is just the centripetal force inward. So force, um, centri so yeah, centrifugal inward. And so basically, that's mv squared over r. Oh, come on. mv squared. Come on, stylus. Squared over r. And you can put in the numbers there. That's 0 0.06 kilograms, 0.7 meters per second. You got to square that, and then it's divided by 0.4 meters. Um, so that's how you find the tension in part A. And then the tension you find in part B is exactly the same formula, um, but using the different, um, different values, uh, the values of the second point. Um, now, there's going to be more tension in, 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 a, in part B, and that should be obvious, um, just intuitive. It should be in, in kind of intuitive. You pull it in, you're going to have to pull harder. Um, but what's not obvious um, is how you calculate the work in part C. So ordinarily, we say, okay, work is the force times the distance. Well, the force is the tension of it. And so what do you use the tension from part A or the tension from part B? And the reality is neither of them. You have to, you have to actually do a, a bit of an integral here. Um, so we're going to set that up and we say, okay, the work that we do to pull it from um, the first position to the second position, um, it's equal to the force that you pull with. Um, and that's a vector. And then dot product times the distance that you pull it with in that direction, right? Um, so fine, we're pulling it, you know, normal to the normal to the direction of motion. So we're, we're um, sorry, we're pulling it in the same direction that we want it to accelerate in, but um, normal to the direction that it's currently moving in. So fine, but we can't, we can't really work with this equation because the force tension is, is changing. Um, so what we really need to do is integrate um, over the distance we're going to pull it. So we're going to start at point 0.4 and end at point 0.1 <clears throat> and then integrate it over the tension. But the tension is actually a function of r, as we showed in parts a and b. Um, dr. So now we just put in the equation that we know for T of R, the one we have up top. So we've got, this is equal to M times our integral um, V of R squared over R dr. <clears throat> yes, now we have a bigger problem. And that's that v itself is a function of r, and so we have to square the v. Um, so really, we need to find v at every point at r, and then substitute that equation into our integral. Um, and the way we do that, um, I, don't, I don't really know if the book has covered this yet or not, um, but we use it using conservation of angular momentum. Um, so we know that uh, l is r cross p, or uh, this angular momentum L um, is equal to the mass times the radius of curvature times the velocity. Um, and then we can kind of shift that around and come up with an equation that tells us that uh, V at every radius R is equal to the angular momentum over the mass times 1 over r. Okay, so that's the velocity at every point r. Um, and that makes sense, too. When, when r um, gets low, when we pull it really far in, um, the velocity has to be really high, right? It speeds up. Um, now, l, angular velocity, um, 
that's a conserved quantity. And that's what makes this equation really useful is that L is something that's, you know, just a constant. And so we can just kind of pull it out from the equation. And it, it just kind of becomes really easy to work with. Um, so when we sub all of this back into our equation, what we get is a whiteboard. Um, the work done is equal to, uh, let's see, L squared over M times that integral. Um, and we end up getting, because we square the V, right? And then we've also got the R underneath. So we end up getting a 1 over R cubed dr. Um, and then you uh, kind of do that integral and do it in its, in its completion there. Um, you should get uh, that is equal to L squared over M. And there's a factor of one half times uh, one over point one squared minus one over point four squared. Cool. So um, now we really just need to know what L is. Um, and we can actually go back and look at um, the equation we had before. We've already established that uh, L is, is um, MVR, right? And so we can just plug in the values that we already know that are true for M, V, and R simultaneously. So either the points at the wide point or at the, the close in point. So before we pulled it or after we pulled it. Um, and then we can just substitute that in to our equation for, um, for the work. So we have L is equal to m v uh v naught r naught we just have to make sure that the v and the r are measured at the same uh at the same point in our in our process here so that's 0 0.06 kilograms times 0 0.7 meters per second um times 0 0.4 meters and you can do the algebra on that so yeah so that's our work